Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we look at the gospel according to Matthew chapter 21 from verse 21. Jesus answered, In truth, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt at all, not only will you do what I have done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be pulled up and thrown into the sea, it will be done. And if you have faith, everything you ask for in prayer, you will receive. Father, we thank you for the sharing of your word. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing your word. Even as we hear, may our faith continue to increase through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. By the grace of God, we shall be looking at another aspect of our teaching. Last time we talked about the 16 reasons why we study the subject of faith. Today we'll be looking at the seven generators of faith. The seven generators of faith. That is what we shall be talking about. When we talk about a generator, we are talking about the source of something. Every generation points to a generator. Anything produced points to a producer. Anything manufactured points to a manufacturer. When we talk about the seven generators of faith, we are looking to understand the ways through which one can get faith and get it sustained. And that exactly is what we shall be looking at. The seven areas, the seven means, or seven sources through which one gets this kind of faith, the God kind of faith, as we continue our journey in the school of faith. Number one, the first generator of faith is the word of God. Just as I have said, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, but it is in that way faith comes from hearing, and that means hearing the word of Christ. Faith for it to work has to be based on the known will of God. And the word of God is the will of God. The first generation generator of faith is the word of God. The more you listen to the word, the more your faith increases. The word of God is a faith word. The word of God carries faith, brings faith, releases faith, implants faith. So the more one listens to the word, the more one listens to the word, the more the faith of that person continues to be built up, continues to grow. Let's look at the few components of the word of God. Number one, the word of God is the spirit. John chapter 6, verse 63, Jesus said, The words I have spoken to you are spirit. They are life. The word is spirit, and so it's not something you can see, it's not something you can touch, and that is why you may not even know when faith is being built up by the instrument of the word. John chapter 6, verse 63. The words I have spoken, they are spirit. And that simply means that the word of God is spiritual or above the realm of nature. And that is why faith. Is not a natural thing. It is what the Latin calls supera natura, meaning super natural, above the realm of nature. Therefore, the natural bows before it. Faith born by the word of God is spiritual, and that is why it controls the natural. Point number two: the word of God is full of faith, according to the same Romans chapter ten. Verse 8, he says, The word is near unto you. It is in your mouth and even in your heart. And that is the word of faith, the faith that we preach. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. You also find that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. The word of God that is in your mouth and that is in your heart is the word of faith. How do I build my faith? I, maybe I am downcast. Maybe I am depressed. Maybe I lack assurance. Keep on declaring that word in your mouth or in your heart, whichever 
the word that is spoken in the mouth eventually settles in the heart. And that is nothing other than the word of faith. The more you speak it out, the more you listen to it, the more your faith grows, the more your faith germinates. Hallelujah. The more you listen to this word of faith, the more your faith grows. Therefore, you have to keep on speaking to yourself, talking to yourself in this word of faith. Point number three, the word of God is full of power. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, the word of God is the power of God unto salvation to those that have it. The word of God has power unto salvation to those that have it. So the word of God is the word of power. It is full of power. This word we are talking about, we cannot see it, but it is spiritual, it is full of faith, and it is also full of power. We need to understand the component of the word of God such that we'll be able to value it, treasure it, and begin to work with it. Point number four, the word of God is full of life. The same John 6, 63 says, the word is not only spirit, it is life. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, this word is, you know, a living thing, is alive and active, is full of life. And that is why it gives life. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He has power to even impart life because it is full of life. You find it also in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Point 5. The word of God is a health or medicine. The word of God is a health or medicine. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 22, and also Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, God sent his word and healed his people. So the word can be sent, and the word effects healing. God's word is his medicine or his tablet for health. And therefore, if your health is weak, if you are suffering from weakness or sickness in your health, just take the pill, or what we call word queen, the tablet of the word of God. The word of God is God. That is point six. The word of God is God. The Bible says in Gospel according to John, chapter one, it says, In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud deum, et deus erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The word of God is God. So when you are speaking the word of God to yourself, it is God talking to you. And you cannot hear God and remain the same, except if you don't mix it with faith, except you don't believe that it is God that is talking to you. Point six, the word of God sanctifies. John chapter 15, verse 3, the word of God sanctifies. You are sanctified by the word. Point seven, the word of God is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. The word of God is truth. Sanctify them in thy word. Thy word is truth. Truth destroys falsehood. Truth builds up. Truth sustains. So when you are putting the word of God into your life, it purifies and sanctifies. Why? Because truth negates falsehood. Point eight, finally, the word of God is light. Psalm 119, verse 105, verse 130. The trance of the word is light. The word of God is light. So by giving us his word, God has given us his faith, his power, his life, his wisdom. In fact, himself, the word of God is God. Psalm 119. Verse 105 and verse 130 talks about the light that comes from the word. The word of God is everything about God. Anything you know about God, if you don't know how to reach God, go to the word. And through the word, you have access to God, to his life, to his faith, to his power, to his wisdom, to God himself through the word. Second generator of faith 
is God's generosity. God's generosity. Romans chapter 12 verse 3 says that God has given to everyone his own measure of faith. And supported by 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, God gives to everybody a measure of faith. But when it comes to special faith, it is given to some people. As we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, but general faith is given to everybody. When we say everybody, we are talking about children of God. It is evident that the chief way through which God's generosity is distributed is through the word of God. And that is why St. Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2, that not everybody has faith. Why is this so? Because not everybody has received the word. So if you see somebody who says, I don't have faith, then it means that the person has not received the source of faith, which is the word of God. And so the generosity of God in giving us faith comes through the word. He's generous and he wants everybody to have it. But the means is through the word of God. Point number three, generator number three, is hearing. Hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 14 says, How then are they to call upon him if they have not come to believe in him? And then how can they believe in him if they have never heard of him. And then how will they hear of him unless there is a preacher for them? Romans 10, 14. Many people underestimate the value of their ears. Your life is governed by faith and this faith can come through, you know, by, can come by hearing through the ear. That means that your ears are very important to your success story. Your ears are very important to your success story. And that is why faith comes by hearing. And because God gave you ear, you have no excuse why you don't or you will not have faith. Hallelujah. Faith comes by consistently hearing and staying a lot in the giving area. Someone will naturally copy and act what he or she hears. So if you keep speaking wrong grammar or pidgin English or French before a newborn baby, the baby will grow up speaking just like that. For instance, if I send my newborn child now to Germany and the child grows up in, in, in Germany, the child will eventually start speaking in, in their language because that is what he or she, the child is consistently hearing. Just this is in the physical for us to understand how faith comes and how we grow in it. If you give birth in it a little bit and you're going to speak pigeon English, pigeon English, wrong grammar before that child, as long as the child keeps hearing it, the child will copy what he hears. So if you keep hearing the word of God, naturally your spirit will copy it. If you keep hearing the word of faith, you will copy it. And before long, you see yourself. Talking like God. Hearing has departments. You will have faith for whatever you keep hearing about, be it positive or negative. That is why Proverbs 4 says, guard your hearts. Because out of it are the issues of life. So you must hear the word of God in the area that demands for your faith. For example, for salvation and for righteousness. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be healed. Cornelius was a good person, but he was not saved or become righteous until he heard the gospel. So the angel said, Go and send for Peter, who will tell you. He will tell you. He will tell you. So if Cornelius was dead, he wouldn't have had anything and probably wouldn't have been saved. So the power of the ears. When it comes to healing, the ears also play an important role. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 14, if you read verses 7 through 10, the lame, the crippled up in the poor healed. The Bible says he was listening to the preaching of God. And faith comes by hearing. So because he was hearing, 
he got the faith to be healed. And when Paul said, rise on your feet, the man even jumped up. Because as a result of what he has had, is the faith and the reason. So each time you have an opportunity to hear the word of God, it's an opportunity to increase your faith. It's an opportunity to strengthen your faith. It's an opportunity to help you leave the level you are to a better or a higher level. The woman with the issue of blood was able to get healed in Mark chapter 5 because the Bible says she has heard. She has heard about Jesus. And because of what she heard, she made up her mind, if only I touch, I will be healed. So negative you know, things will also bring faith in the negative. Meaning that if you keep on hearing negative words, you'll be able to develop negative faith. If you keep on hearing failure things, you develop failure faith or faith in failure. If you keep on hearing immoral things, your faith will develop towards immorality. If you keep on hearing passages about prosperity and abundance, your faith will be geared up towards prosperity and abundance. And that is why you don't just listen to anybody anyhow. Don't just listen to any music anyhow because what you hear affects what happens to your life eventually because your ear connects directly to your heart. Your ears are connected to your heart. So what you hear affects eventually what you become or how you behave and so on. So generator number four, the fourth generator of faith is sight. See, the scripture says that we walk by faith and not sight, which is correct. But I want you to know that what one sees can build and sustain his faith and vice versa. Now look at the Bible in John chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says this was the first of Jesus' signs. It was in Cana in Galilee. He revealed his glory and his disciples believed him. He revealed it by the miracle. So when they saw it, they believed. You see that what you see can help the faith. And that is why in the crusade ground, when one miracle is performed, it can give birth to more miracles because the people have seen something. So faith can equally come by what you see. When we talk about seeing, it comprises both physical and spiritual because everything exists in what we call two forms, duality of existence. You will begin to understand, to, to study the God kind of faith, understand why the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 that God calls those things that be not as though they were. The reason is that even though they may not be physically in existence, actually spiritually they are in existence. So when God begins to call things that be not as though they were, it is actually because they were, they are, they exist in the spiritual, even though they are not yet made manifest. And therefore, God calls them from the spiritual realm to the from the spiritual to the physical. This is part of why the Bible says, Let the weak say, I am strong. He's not saying that you are not weak, but he's saying, Don't confess the physical. Because everything exists in two forms, the unseen form and the seen form. Even yourself, everybody exists in the spiritual and in the physical. That is why, because the spiritual is superior, there are many limitations to the physical that don't exist in the spiritual. That is why when you start dreaming now, you can see yourself fly, even though you cannot fly physically. You can see yourself running and you can jump over this house. Why? In the spiritual, you are not limited. But flesh limits one. Flesh is the physical. And therefore, sometimes you go above the physical to confess spiritual reality. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 27, if you read verses 22 to 25, Paul was confident that they will not perish in the sea. Why? He said, last night. The angel of the God I said stood by me. 
what Paul saw, who said his faith. Now, see, if people can eat, nobody, nobody will die because of what I saw and what I was told. Meaning that that sight, that vision, enriched, encouraged, strengthened, empowered his faith. And so he was now speaking with assurance that nobody will die. Praise the Lord. Mm. In 2 Kings chapter 6, if you read verses 8 through 16, we saw a scenario of Elisha being surrounded by enemies. And his servant began to cry, My master, my master, we are finished too. He must have said, Why? Well, because we are surrounded by enemies. Why he was crying, his master was laughing. Why? Because his master was seeing what he was not seeing. His own sight was limited to physical, while his master's sight was not limited to the physical. He was seeing spiritual realities. And because of what he was seeing, he was not panicked. Any time any child of God is afraid, it depends on the focal length, the focal point, based on what he was or he's able to see. If you limit your sight to the physical, that may be intimidating. And so Elisha, Elisha's servant was afraid because of what he saw. Elisha was bold also because of what he saw. His servant developed fear because of what he saw. The master developed faith or had faith because of what he was seeing. Meaning that fear can come through seeing, through sight, and faith can equally come through sight. And that's why we need to see the right thing. Praise God. Amen. And that has to do with seeing through the word of God. What we call seeing the invisible. And so Elisha had to pray for his servant. Oh Lord, open his eyes. When the eyes of the servant was opened and he saw what he saw, replaced the fear in him with faith. There may be somebody here and you're already afraid based on what you are seeing. Probably you are seeing Goliath. But when you go beyond Goliath to see that your God is already behind the Goliath, waiting to smash him if you give the order, you'll be laughing at Goliath. But if you don't see the spiritual reality, the physical will. Intimidate you. And that is why faith comes also by seeing or have to see the spiritual reality. But faith is spirit, the word of God is spirit. Even if you are sick now, your healing has been packaged, has been obtained, is in stock, is there. For by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. So you need to see your healed state to laugh at the pain. To laugh at the fever. If you see fever, you laugh at it. If you see gain, you laugh at pain. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you see blessing, you laugh at curses. And therefore, if you be able to see through the word of God, you are healed state. When people are talking of meningitis, pneumonia, malaria, Ebola, HIV, you'll be laughing. Why? Because you have seen the spiritual reality. That you, you have divine health, that you are healed, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That is faith at work. And so when you see it spiritually, it is now the duty of your faith to draw from the spiritual onto physical manifestation. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says that we aim not for the visible. But for the invisible. Why? He said the visible things are transitory, but the invisible things are the ones that are eternal. The things we see, they are temporary. And that's why our focus is not on those things we can see with our you know, physical senses, but what we call the unseen realities. So any condition you are seeing in your life now, even the English man says, no condition. Is permanent. I am weak. I am sick. Oppressed. Suppressed. Harassed. Refused. Reduced. Rejected. Ejected. Oh, no. no matter what you see, that is just temporary. And that is why it is seasonal. It will soon come to pass. Therefore, don't confess conditions. Because conditions are transitory. 
you are single lawyer, very soon, the Egyptian you see today, you will see no more. According to the Bible, the pain you see today will be there no more tomorrow. Because time will tell. Time will make it disappear. The poverty, the lack, the stagnation, they are all temporary. Therefore, don't confess that which is temporary. Stick to the word of God. Come by the word of God. And surely your glory will continue to shine. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Uh, everything you see is nothing but symptom. And symptom is like a shadow. It's not a real thing. And when I say symptom, I say that symptom is when you, you take symptom for the reality, it is like taking what actually does not belong to you. Taking what does not belong to you. Just like the postman from the post office, he comes with a letter to your house, knocks on the door, and hands you a parcel. And the parcel is written Mr. A, and your name is Mr. B. The parcel has come to you, but it's not your own. What are you supposed to do? To reject it and not accept it. Else, if you accept it, you have become a thief. 